having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for food by which you may truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today the Phelan family will be taking the vocation cup. Please pay for vocations of the priesthood for religious life for the sanctity of marriage, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I believe someone's here to speak to us about the Festival of the Poor. Good morning. My name is Katja Leiden, and I'm here to let you know about the Festival of the Poor. It starts off uh, Friday, February 28th, and it runs through Sunday, March 1st. And I'm going to let you know some of the activities. Um, Friday, we're going to have dinner under the tent, chicken and ribs, music and entertainment. And our own Father Freddy will be providing some of the entertainment that evening. Uh, Saturday, we have a 5K run, which you can register. We have an arts and crafts fair. We have rides, international food booths, a silent auction. And in the evening, we have the Mardi Gras ball, which you can purchase tickets for. Uh, Sunday, we start off with breakfast under the big top. We have the rides will be open, the game booths, and the raffle winner will be picked that on Sunday. And we also have a live auction. And we want you all to remember that 100% of the proceeds go to our brothers and sisters in needs in our community. So please visit us in the rotunda. We're out there selling t-shirts, ride bracelets, and the raffle tickets, and the dinner tickets as well. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace and love to serve the Lord and all of those he places in our lives. Thanks be to God. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So
Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome any visitors we may have here to St. Louis. Our celebrant will be our brand new Father Pedro Toledo. Assisting him is, well, a full house of priests that you'll see and deacons. Our electors are Charmaine Acaza and Natalie Bauta. Our altar servers are Juan Carlos Lagos and Samuel Bauta. Let us stand and celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Please join me in welcoming our newly ordained Father Pedro Toledo. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. Take a seat for a minute. Today is, uh, for me, is a great pleasure, it's an honor, but it's a humble thing to be offering this Mass. And I'm offering this Mass as a thanksgiving for uh, what God has done for me, how he has guided me. It's a mass of thanksgiving for my wife of 34 years and my children who have supported me, loved me, and helped me through the ministry. Also to the brave um, brothers and sisters from our community that cross, you know, from, went from uh, Canterbury to Rome. And my thanks also to you who opened your arms to us, give us your love, your friendship, and especially to Father Paul. You have a great man of God. You have a good pastor, an excellent pastor, and he was an excellent mentor. I, I, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> This is the first reason for uh, our intention for this Mass. The second one is for Christian unity. What you are seeing here is uh, 
a small token of what Christians must be, one body in Christ. Today, our liturgy will be um, seasoned by Anglican liturgy. The penitential rite, you will find several, um, uh, almost the penitential rite will be the Anglican uh, rite. You will find the, da the dice and dows um, we like to use. And also, um, bef you will hear the two most beloved prayers in the Anglican world. The, the prayer of purity at the, at the beginning of uh, the penitential rite, and then the prayer of humble access before um, uh, say, singing the, the Lamb of, uh, after singing the Lamb of God. You are going to taste what is life to be, to be one. So, stand up. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Here, what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. May Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who is, who His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy on us, pardon, and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses will be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do you think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets? 
have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teach others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with all your opponents quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and a judge will hand you over to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed the adultery within her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife must give a full bill of decree. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said in, to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, not by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. I will take the notes with me, otherwise you want me you want me like anymore. <laughs> so and I don't want to create to put more pressure on my wife. Um, making signs like a catcher in a baseball game saying, oh, we are going over the time. So, uh, you are safe when I have my notes in front of me. Life is all about choices. From the moment we wake up until the, we wait, get back into bed, we are evaluating our choices and deciding which one is the best for us. Our Christian life is not different. Today's readings lay before us an important matter to consider, such as our call and duty to obey God's commandments. I will summarize the teachings of the first reading and the gospel in two sentences. So then you can go home. No, that's kidding. Obedience to God's commandments is first a matter of choice. And second, but more importantly, a matter of the heart. 
and choosing to obey or disobey God's commandments will bring about good or bad consequences. However, there is plenty of grace and mercy available to us when we unwisely use our freedom and choose to disobey God. My homily has four points, and this doesn't mean that Father Paul or Pope Francis's three-point homilies are lacking or that mine is better, but I think it was better for me to lay it down that way. Obedience to God's commandments is a matter of choice. This is what we learn from the first reading, starting with a conditional clause. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. The second part of it, that you can keep the commandments, will be true if the condition, if you choose, is fulfilled. From God's perspective, he does demand and expect from each of his children complete and perfect obedience. But God has given us a free will, as the writer tells us in verse 14. God, in the beginning, created human beings and made them subject to their own free choice. This basic and important truth gives us the choice to obey or disobey God's commandments. Daily, we confront easy and difficult choices, also in important and unimportant ones, and all of them resulting in either good or bad consequences for us. However, we need to look at these choices up as opportunities to demonstrate our use or misuse of our God-given freedom. You know, at 56 years of age, I thought that I had made almost all my most difficult and important decisions in life. I now believe it was a very naive thinking. Because becoming Catholic, and a priest resulted in the foremost critical decision I have ever made. I never thought to become Catholic nor priest. It didn't cross my mind. However, before the facts, I gathered during my long years of study, reading, ministry experiences, and the critique of the state of Protestantism, I became convinced that I, and I'm going to borrow uh, the words of a renowned Reformed professor, that I, I, that I have no real basis upon which to perpetuate what is, in effect, an act of schism. And that is what many people Many Christians are living today. So, therefore, I wanted to come back to the church from where we came out of it. The following verses vividly describe what was going on within me. Loyalty is doing the will of God. Set before you are fire and water to whatever you choose. Stretch out your hand. Choices calls, call us to make up our minds and act accordingly. In my case, my choices at that moment were either to look to the other side of the street, remain in a schism, and make everybody happy, or doing the right thing, namely repent and come back to the one Catholic and apostolic church. Despite the personal and emotional cost of such choosing. Now you, you see what I choose, what I chose. But let me say this to you. Before acting on whatever the choices are in front of you, think on this and let it guide your decision-making process. 
loyalty is doing the will of God. Repeat with me. Loyalty is doing the will of God. If you act according to it, be sure you will find yourself obeying God. And in case you are not sure about what it means doing the will of God, this will help you. Guide your choosing in such a manner that whatever is what you chose has been guided by your love to God and your love to neighbor. Certainly, obedience to God's commandments is first a matter of choice. But for God, obeying his commandments or doing the right thing is not enough because obedience is a matter of the heart. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus saying, unless you, your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. What does Jesus mean with unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees? Let me say, the Pharisees and the scribes were very scrupulous in obeying the Torah or law of Moses. The Mishnah is a book as thick as a missile describing with meticulous detail how to fulfill the law of Moses. The question then is, what is our Lord truly asking us? What else is Jesus implying here? He answers this question with the formula, you have heard, but I say to you. For instance, he said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. For Jesus to take the sin of adultery from the external to the internal realm makes the mind of his listeners and readers give a sharp 180 degrees turn because they were only preoccupied with the externalities of the obedience to God's law. Yes, for God's obedience is not exclu exclusively a matter of choosing the right thing, but choosing it also for the right motive. This is not a new thing, because God complains about his people many times through his prophets. One instance of it, it is found in the book of Isaiah. It says, this people, Israel, draws near with words only and honors me with their lips alone, though their hearts are far from me. We can deceive people, but we can't deceive God. People see what we choose and what we do, but don't know the reasons why we chose or did them. However, God sees us like one of those X-ray machines in the airport where nothing is left hidden to the side. But why is the heart important? Jesus' answers is, because from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, unchastity, theft, false witness, blasphemy. The heart is important because it is the place of birth of all sins. Sometimes we may choose to obey God and do the right thing, but the issue is, why did we do it? Did we do it for the right or wrong motive? Some people might come to Mass every Sunday or solemnities to fulfill one of the church's commandments. But the question everybody must ask under the light, uh, 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 under the light of the formula you have heard, but I say to you, is, why did I come? Did I come because of love or for God or to fulfill the demands of the church and get it over with? Next time, you, make a, you have to make a choice. Think, why will you choose this or that option? Remember also, the eyes of God 
behold his works, and he understands every human deed. Summing up my two first points, I'm going to the third. Obedience to God's commandments is first a matter of choice, and second, but more importantly, a matter of the heart. And choosing to obey or disobey God's commandments will bring about good or bad consequences. Do not think that the act of choosing does not have consequences whatsoever. In fact, the consequences could be temporal or eternal. But I will treat the eternal ones because of its criticality for, the, for, for all of us. The first reading says, before everyone are life and death, whichever they choose will be given them. Remember also the words of Jesus, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, obedience to God's commandments is a matter of life and death, a matter of heaven and hell. The choice for Israel was in similar terms. God told Israel through Moses, See, I have today set before you life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments, the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I am giving you today, loving the Lord your God and walking in His way and keeping His commandments, statutes and ordinances, you will live and grow numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Whatever be the circumstance you are in and the options you have at hand, think always that obeying or disobeying God's commandments will bring life or death, blessing or cursings. But remember, when you choose the path of disobedience, what you receive in return was not sent by God, but what you choose or chose to receive. Before everyone are life and death, whichever they choose will be given them. Moreover, in verses 11 and 12 on the same passage of Sirach, says, do not say it was God, God's doing that I fell away. Do not say God himself has led me astray. God, God never commands anyone to sin. The fault, the fault is not our, it's not God's, but ours. I will restate what I have said so far. Obedience to God's commandments is first a matter of choice, and second, but more importantly, a matter of the heart. And choosing to obey or disobey God's commandments will bring about good or bad consequences. This brings me to the, my last point. I think I'm, I'm on time. Grace and mercy are available for all of us in our striving to obey God's commandments. We can live out of mass today with a heavy burden on, in our hearts, but there is grace. There is plenty of grace and mercy available to all of us when we unwisely use our freedom and choose to disobey God. Grace and mercy are abundantly available in the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation. Certainly, God is just, but also He is love and wants you to get life, love, grace, mercy, strength, joy, faith, and hope from Him. For all Good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. Never is late to come to God. He, like the father of the prodigal son, is patiently waiting for you to show up. So he may run towards you to embrace you, to kiss you, to dress you, 
to feast for you and with you. Therefore, come to him. And I conclude with the words of G.K. Chesterton. He says, every act of will is an act of self-limitation. To desire action is to desire limitation. In that sense, every act is an act of self-sacrifice. When you choose anything, you reject everything else. Let me repeat it for you. When you choose anything, you reject everything else. So if you choose to disobey God, you are rejecting him. But if you choose to obey God, you are rejecting yourself and evil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and let's confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess and baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the race and life to come. Amen. Trusting in God's unconditional love for us, let us present our prayers and concerns. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let all God's people be the blessing of Christ's presence in the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the priorities of leaders of nations be peace, justice, and the health and welfare of all people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our routine efforts to help others and our festival for the poor be a blessing for those in need and for ourselves, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That catechumens, sponsors, and catechists in RCIA programs be blessed with increasing knowledge and love of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the eyes of our understanding be opened, seeing anew the gifts of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. Louis Parish family and a special, special intention, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Doris Green and Jose Pabe Yucateria, be enjoying all the promises of eternal life, and that those mourning the loss of a loved one be comforted, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous and loving God, hear our prayers this day and every day. Help us to accept the love you give through no merit of our own, so that we in turn can love each other freely and fully. Give us what we need to make wise choices and to stay faithful to the desire of, for the good that you place within all people. We pray always in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. couple reminders while the ushers are uh, t taking up the collection. Thanks to everyone who's already contributed to the ABCD, made their pledges to the diocesan 
uh, charities program. Uh, thanks to those who've made them. If you have your envelope, just put it in the uh, collection today. If you need brochures or the pledge envelopes, you can find them uh, in the pews. Uh, prayer group is having a special night of finding peace and healing. They've invited uh, uh, Maria Badia to come and lead the group. That's going to be this Thursday night, uh, the 20th, at 7.45 in the assembly hall. Uh, next Sunday, the Knights of Columbus will be sponsoring the parish community breakfast. That will be from 8 in the morning next Sunday until 11 o'clock. So if you like the breakfast, you have to go before uh, this Mass. That will be sponsored by the Knights of Columbus. And immediately uh, following uh, this Mass, there will be a reception for uh, Father Toledo, uh, in honor of, obviously, his ordination in First Mass, and also for him and his wife for their 34th wedding anniversary. And that reception will be out in the patio in the courtyard. If you have any other questions, uh, uh, simply stop by the welcome table in the narthex.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity may the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess your resurrection yeah. until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting gift to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith, charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants, Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, to the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for you on. Listening graciously to the prayers of his family, whom he has summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself to all your children scattered throughout the world. For the Father loves your sisters, who all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give time into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. To Christ our Lord, who to whom we bestow all the world that is. Through him and in him and within him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father who was in heaven
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the, la, to the supper of the Lamb. I'm not worthy to the center of my roof, for only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Search me, know me, try me and see every worthless affection hidden in me and all. Is that you'd cleanse me, Lord? Create in me a heart that's clean. Conquer the power of secret shame. Come wash away.
Give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift ourselves to another. Give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift ourselves to Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for food by which we truly live. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated for a moment. Vocation Chalice this week uh, goes home with Jose and Anna Rodriguez and family. Well, this is the part that uh, my family doesn't like to be introduced. Let me ask my wife to stand up for everybody to know her, please. <laughs> Betsy. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm my oldest daughter is over there with my uh, granddaughter, and <laughs> Lina Bet. Uh, she is Olivia and her husband. Uh, playing the bass, Ruben, over there. <laughs> My second daughter, Aileen, and her husband, Victor. <laughs> and my beloved son is in Tampa in the University of South Florida, South Florida so he couldn't come uh, for, for, to celebrate with us this uh, wonderful time. So thank you so much. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. May, may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, sit down again. Okay. It's all my fault. What can I tell you? It's such an exciting day, isn't it? We're so glad to have Father Pedro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Julie Kaufman, and I've come to talk to you about the Festival for the Poor, obviously, as you see me here. This coming up now in two weeks, it's February 28th, March 1st, and 2nd. I want to invite all of you as brothers and sisters here at St. Louis to get up and come and help. We Volunteer, come and party, eat a lot of food, buy a t-shirt, <laughs> buy a hat. You know, it's hopefully we're going to have lots of sun, so you'll need the hat. Uh, we also have long sleeve t-shirts. 
in case you want to hide your arms for some reason. Friday night, we have a dinner under the tent, $15 for adults. Friday night, we have the, the rides open. Saturday morning is the run. Those of you who want to do it, we have the applications out there. Help yourself. Uh, Saturday night, we have a dinner for couples, for grown-ups. Food, wine, good food, adult company. Enjoy that. We have a hospitality booth where we have need of baked goods. And for those of you who can bake, bring them on. Bring them Saturday morning, and we'll be delighted to sell them. And hopefully, you'll actually buy some of someone else's as well. This is what it's all about. We're raising money for the community to help out in the community. We also have the silent auction. If you have things in your house that are still new and in a box, but you don't really want them anymore, bring them to the office, donate them. We'll make beautiful things. We'll have the silent auction. You can bid for them. If you have old baskets that you don't need anymore, drop those off. We make a lot of baskets, as you probably know if you've ever been to the auction. Sunday morning, there's a breakfast. Don't eat ahead of time. Come and eat here. Um, Sunday, we have food, food, food for the booths. The rides will be open from 11 till, I think, 8 or something like that. Don't forget the raffle. Six for five bucks. What a bargain. And the prizes are pretty good. Please come be part of it. This is what St. Louis is all about. We're brothers and sisters. We get to have fun and raise money, too. Don't be shy. We need all the help, we need your money, we need to have fun, we need to visit. So come on down, God bless all of you. Yeah, okay. so. This Mass has ended. <clears throat> Let us go now with love for the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Remember to join us in the courtyard for a reception.